Hey, what is going on everybody? It is Nolan or the Optimistic Gamer here and welcome back to part two of the Chain Hotel tutorial. In today's episode, we will be working on the interior of the hotel. I know I said I was going to try to do this in two parts, but there's just so much happening on the interior that it's just going to be too long of an episode if I do that the interior and exterior all in one episode so i have decided to split it up it will be a three-part tutorial this is part two the interior let's get started right away with the materials you are going to need smooth sandstone oak planks for the floor smooth sandstone stairs polished andesite as well as polished andesite stairs and you will also need white concrete and that will be all for the materials for now. Again, we're going to need a lot of materials in this part, so just be ready for that. Let's start by heading inside of the hotel. Remember last episode, if you saw that, we worked on the outer walls and got the building itself put in place with the windows and doors and all of that good stuff. So in this part, we will be focusing on the lobby and the rooms themselves. This shouldn't be too difficult. I'm not going to do each room individually, but rather instead what I'm going to do is show you guys how to build maybe 10 or 15 different pieces of furniture that you can then take those designs and put them in the rooms yourself. I will show you how I have furnished my rooms, but that gives you guys a little more freedom to make the rooms look the way you want to. So to begin, we are going to take our oak planks and we are going to go to the first level. By the way, I would recommend perhaps a night vision potion, or you can use the fill command that, we, that I showed you how to do last episode and you can just cut away the corners of those slabs and replace it with air and then fill it back with the bottom quartz slabs once you are done just to let a little bit of light in. But I have turned off the shaders, I have put on night vision because it is pretty dark inside of the hotel as of right now. Okay, so to begin, go to the bottom row of sandstone that we have for the outer walls and find the middle window on the shorter side. It should be a three block wide window. Go to that bottom sandstone and place an oak plank. We are going to extend this out towards the middle of the hotel by 13. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Just like that. Go to the middle of the long side where the front door is go right above that on that bottom sandstone we are going to extend this out 15 so 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 you can do the same thing on this side out 15 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 and on the short side again 13 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Reload the chunks there. Now we are going to make a perimeter connecting all of these planks that we have just placed down, just like that, so the corners should meet up. And we are going to do this on all sides, like so. And the same thing over here. And the way this is going to work is we are going to have an empty space here in the middle since we don't have any windows so we can't have rooms here in the middle and the rooms would be a little too large if we were to split them say right here and have a single hallway go down the middle so we're going to have this nice little walkway and have the hotel be very open all the way from the lobby up to the ceiling and maybe in the last part, we will put a skylight up in there. So now we are just going to fill in all of this area with oak planks. Now, remember last episode, I showed you how to use the fill command. If you want to do that, you don't want to go from this corner all the way to that corner because that's going to fill in this area in the middle. We don't want to do that. What you want to do instead 
is find the uh, where the planks end before the open area. And then you can just line yourself up with that. And same thing that we did last episode with the coordinates. And you want to be facing the block. And same thing over here. We will then go to the opposite corner. I'm going to hit enter and you will see what I mean with filling this area in without affecting the middle part when I type in oak planks and hit enter it'll fill in just like that and then you can do the same thing here so you can set your fill coordinate to there and then all the way to this corner and it'll fill in all along right here and you can just go with the four different sides until it is all filled in. Okay, so that'll be looking something like this. Again, we want this nice, large, open hole here in the middle, and we are going to do a railing around that, but we'll get to that a little later. Let's go ahead and get started on some outlines for the rooms. So start by taking your smooth sandstone and go to either of the corners. If you're facing the long side, go to the corner on the left. So don't go to this corner over here face the long side, face the front doors, and go to that corner towards the left. And begin by finding that window on the long side. And then in the wall, we have this three sandstone wide wall. We want to place a smooth sandstone right here. Extend that out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen like that. And then extend it this way by two, one, two, actually three. So that should be four in total. And then place two going that way, one, two. And then we are going to place 26 going in this direction. So it'll be 29 in total from this block. We're going to place down 26 more. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So it should line up with the wall right next to the second window on the short side. And we can go ahead and connect that all the way. And then wreck these two after. So connect and then wreck, or you don't have to connect it, whatever you would like to do. All right, so that is going to be one hallway here. Now let's go ahead and do this. So you can see this is four planks wide. We are going to do the same over here. So leave four planks on the fifth, place the smooth sandstone, and this is going to go pretty much all the way, at least five blocks past where the end of the balcony is. So one, two, three, four, and five, and then we can turn it and continue on. And we're going to do the same thing. So the walkway here is four planks wide on all four sides. And let me just double check one, two, three, four. Perfect. And we will go ahead and connect this in the opposite direction. So this will give us the walls for the rooms. And now we're just going to work on the walls within each individual room. Before we do that, though, I'm going to go ahead and do the elevator shaft area. So to do that, go to the short side, line yourself up in the middle with those three wide windows and wreck that middle block and then two on each side. So we have a five block gap here and then turn those walls so that you are going towards the wall and then leave a two block gap and place two smooth sandstone, two block gap, one smooth sandstone. Same thing here, two block gap, two, two block gap, one. Perfect. And then we are going to find the, so go to the next window over, and then we have the three sandstone, find the middle, and build that out all the way until it's connecting with that inner wall. I'm going to fly up so you guys can see what that looks like. All right, and then we're going to go down here and do the same thing on this side, finding the middle block on this little sandstone section. 
and that is the elevator area. We're going to do something similar over here on this side, so wreck the middle five blocks, one, two, three, four, five, and then turn it in on each side. On this side, we can do the same thing, two block gap, one, two, two block gap, one, and then leave that three block space on the fourth block here, the wall all the way to the edge. And same thing here, we'll do the wall just like that. But this time we are going to have a three block gap and then place a single sandstone and connect that to the wall. So over here we are going to have four elevators. On this side we are going to have two public elevators, one service elevator for housekeeping, and a vending slash ice area. Okay, now we can continue on with the rooms. So let's go right over here. And where we have this corner, we're going to be working on the long side here. Go in one block and then place one, two, three, four sandstone blocks just like that. Then leave a four block gap. One, two, three, four. On the fifth block, place one, two, three, four. And then we are going to connect these two walls like that. So we should have a four by three area right in here. And then we can wreck that middle block right there. This is going to be a bathroom for this room that we are working on. And we can also connect this wall as well. So it should look like this. And then we can come over here and wreck that sandstone just like so. So that is a bathroom for this room and then a bathroom for this room. Continuing with this wall, place one, two, three more sandstone going towards the short side. That will be looking something like that. All right, and then we are going to leave a five block gap from this wall, one, two, three, four, five. On the sixth block, a sandstone. Connect that with the exterior wall so it should look something like this. And then with this wall here, place one more sandstone like that, leave a three block gap and one more sandstone like that. Wreck the middle sandstone here for the inner wall. That will be the doorway into this room. And then coming over to this side, we, where we have this two block wide space, wreck the block on the right hand side. So now we have this room complete. We have this room complete. Let's move on to the room which is right above the front door here. All right, this room is gonna be nice and simple. So we have the two windows here in the middle. Go to the right hand window, leave a one block gap, and then on that second set of sandstone, connect that all the way to the inner wall. And then leave a, let's say a one block gap from that wall and then wreck that sandstone right there. And then we are going to continue where we have this wall, extend that out for one, two, three, four, five, six, and then turn it going towards the inner wall, leaving that middle block open so that we have space for a bathroom. All right, and then right here we will do, this is going to be a housekeeping closet. So we have this window right here, and then that one in the middle, find that middle sandstone and build a wall connecting out like that. And then in line with those windows, wreck the two sandstone like that. We'll have double doors into the housekeeping closet. Next, wreck the block adjacent to that wall that we just extended from the exterior, and then go in one block in one more block, so we have a two block wide area right here. Extend this out for one, two, leave a one block gap, one more block like so, and turn that and go all the way, leaving a two block gap right there before you get to the shorter wall on this side. And then with this wall right here, we can extend that going that way. All right, and then go to these windows. We're on the long side. Go to the windows here in the corners and find that middle sandstone block 
build that out so it's connecting here and then extend it out for seven more one two three four five six or sorry six more and then turn it going in like that and then we can wreck that block right here in line with the middle sandstone block between the second and third window so it should be looking something like this now I'm gonna pause here for a second so that this is the whole um, this is one side of the rooms complete so I'll just pause here so you can catch up feel free to pause the video as well or go back and re-watch some of the sections I know this can be a little bit difficult to follow but uh, hopefully it, I'm doing my best for you and it's easy enough all right now we are going to turn around and face this side we've kind of started with the room over here let's continue on with that now okay so go to the windows in the corner on the long side find the first two windows right in between them place a row of smooth sandstone and then extend that out for one two three four five six more and then turn that and this is pretty symmetrical to that corner over there so you can kind of follow the same pattern and then right here we are going to extend this wall one two three four and turn it leave a one block gap one more sandstone then leave a two block gap place a sandstone here and we are going to connect that so that should be lined up in between those two windows here and then leave a five block gap one two three four five and then place a row of sandstone going to the exterior wall this is going to be our stairwell you can wreck not the middle block but the block to the right of the middle all right and then for the stairwell from this middle block leave a one two three block gap on the fourth place a sandstone extend this back for a total of five that's one two three four five just like that moving on to the next room go to so we have the two windows and then this four block wide sandstone wall on the third block place sandstone to connect to the inner wall just like this and then leave a go to the left hand side of that room one block gap wreck that block and then another one block gap and then a wall like that so a three wide area right in here and then this goes for one two three four five and then we turn it in just like this all right i know you're getting tired but we are almost there we just have a couple more rooms to do so let's begin with the shorter side windows over here find the first two windows and then right up against the second one that sandstone here we are going to place a solid wall of sandstone that goes all the way to that wall right there and then going back leave a one block gap wreck one two three and then wreck the first two that we placed just like that all right and then with this wall that we have on the shorter side the inner wall go to that corner and then go one block in on the long side and then place a row of sandstone like that leave a one two three four block gap on the fifth block another row of sandstone and then wreck that middle block now over here the first two windows on this longer side find the middle and place a sandstone wall going across just like this and last but not least the bathroom for this room go we're on the short side now go to this wall right here at the service elevator go one block in wreck that block and then place a wall right next to it one two three and then turn this in to line up with that wall right there and wreck the second block like so and that is all of the rooms laid out let's just make sure oh a doorway right here we can place that right there in line with that window and that should be all of the rooms 
perfectly laid out. I'm going to go up here and pause for a second. Let me do this real quick. So again, just so you can see all of that, the front door is at the bottom of my screen right now, just so you are aware. The front door is at the bottom. Let's move on to, well, what do we do with these walls? We, oh, I almost forgot. We need a doorway right here, which lines up in the middle of those five blocks. Okay. Oh, and a doorway for this bathroom. Man, I'm forgetting all kinds of stuff. Go one block in on the second block, a doorway right there. Well, now I just want to verify everything. Okay. Yep. Now we're good. All right. So it should look like this. Let's go ahead and figure out what the heck we're going to do with all these walls. Well, we need to extend these up for a total of five blocks. So that's one, two, three, four, five. So it should be one block above where we have the glass. Actually, for simplicity, well, no, we'll go five high. And then what we will do is for the ceiling, that will match the height of the walls, and we will use white concrete for that, but you can use any block that you want. I just like white concrete because it's pretty neutral, and it gives a just a nice smooth finished look to the rooms. Same thing with the floor. Feel free to use anything um, that you want for the flooring material. To do that with the fill command, you still can. Even with the gap here in the middle, you don't have to do it in four different sections. Now you can just go to each opposite corner and do slash fill. Same thing with the coordinates. Although this time you will type in the block that you want to use. So say you want to use polished andesite, you will do slash fill the two sets of coordinates, polished andesite space replace. You type out replace space oak planks. That will replace all of your oak planks with polished andesite. So you can do that with whatever you want. For now, we are going to, anywhere that we place down smooth sandstone, we are going to raise it up so that it is five blocks high in total. So we are adding four more rows to all of the sandstone all around us. I'm going to do that off camera to save us a lot of time. So once you have finished that, it'll be looking like this. Now that we have all of those walls raised up to the height that we want. And for the doorways, you can see inside we still have all these gaps. For the ones that are only one block wide inside the rooms, those we will fill in with three sandstone like that. So this is going to be all of the bathroom doors. And then on some of the corner rooms, we have these little walls that kind of stick out a little bit. Those we are going to fill in with just two sandstone like that. And then I think there's a room somewhere on the side. Maybe not. No. Okay. Yeah. So all the bathroom doors, remember those are three blocks above the doorway. And then on those corner rooms, it's going to be two blocks. I'm going to do that off camera as well. Okay, so when you get all of those filled in, actually, I did forget. We do have this little archway right here that we are going to fill in. It's not a corner room, but it's right next to a corner room. So we'll go ahead and fill that in. And now for the outer doors of each room, including the staircase as well and the service closet, that is going to be two sandstone, like this, and then underneath, standing from the walkway, an upside down smooth sandstone stair, like that. Okay, so that'll be looking something like this. We have all of the stairs in place above each of the room doors, as well as the service closet and the stairwell over here. Let's go ahead and do the stairwell. It's nice and easy. So for that, we will be using the polished andesite. Go ahead and wreck all of the oak planks within these walls on all sides, including under the sandstone that we placed in the middle. And we are going to replace these three right here with polished andesite. So that'll be looking like this. 
And then to the left hand side, when you walk into the stairwell, we are going to do polished andesite like that. And on these back two areas as well. And then the stairs will be on the left side. So we can do the right side up andesite stairs for a total of five blocks high. It should line up at the edge of that sandstone wall. And then we will just do the same pattern going all the way around with the polished andesite. And on the next row up, we will just continue that same pattern and I'm going to put upside down stairs underneath the right side upstairs as well. The sandstone wall will continue all the way to the top of the stairwell. It will also continue to the bottom of the stairwell like this. And we will have the stairwell go all the way down to ground level. And we will do the upside down stairs under the normal stairs. And we will just continue the staircase going down towards the lobby as well. So that is how our staircase will be. And then you can step out on each floor. Okay, let's move on to the ceiling. So like I said before, the ceiling is one block above the windows. And I'm just using white concrete for this. You can use any block. I recommend a more neutral block, so maybe a white or a light gray. But again, feel free to use whatever block you prefer. And we will just fill in inside of all the rooms, as well as the th uh, first three blocks on the walkway. So like this but we are leaving the outer row of planks alone. So this is going to go all the way around, but not cover the outermost row of planks. So if we're standing here looking up, no ceiling above us here. We will do something different with the design for that. In the meantime, go ahead and fill all of those gaps in with white concrete, including in between the elevators, but obviously don't fill in the elevator shafts themselves. Remember, this is a vending machine area, so that will be filled in. That's a service elevator. Leave that alone. And obviously the stairwell. Leave that alone. Everything else will be covered with the ceiling. All right, so when the ceiling is in place, it'll be looking about like this. Again, we left the elevator shafts alone, and we left that row with the outermost set of planks alone as well. And the staircase is just left as is. Now, this is the fun part, especially if you don't have World Edit. We are going to duplicate this design for every floor above it. Remember, we're leaving the brick sections alone. Don't worry about the staircase going down to the lobby for now, but extend that all the way to the top set of windows. And remember, it's going to be your flooring. For me, I'm using planks, covering all of the ceiling that we have, and you're going to extend it over that concrete by one on each side, just like this. And don't fill in the elevator shaft you can leave those planks down there for now, but fill in everywhere else. Continue the staircase all the way up to that top floor, and it's going to be floor, and then four blocks, and then our ceiling right above the windows, and then the floor, four blocks, ceiling, floor, four blocks, ceiling, and floor, four blocks, ceiling. And then this empty space up here, don't worry about anything up there for now. I'm not sure that we will do anything with that, but again, not 100% sure yet. Maybe we could put some restaurants or something up here. For simplicity, I would not cover the walls. I would just extend the sandstone going up all the way, get all those walls built for the four floors above this one and I will meet you guys right back here. 
Okay, so once you are finished, it'll be looking about like this. We have five complete floors, not furnished, but all the rooms are in place. The elevator shafts should be looking, uh-oh. If you filled that in, you can go ahead and wreck all of that so that it actually looks like an elevator shaft. Anyway, we will now work on, I told you that there was a design for the underside of those planks, and for that, we will just use stairs. I'm thinking just to match the ceiling, we will use some smooth court stairs, and we can go around and place upside down smooth court stairs all along the oak planks, like this, underneath, rather. I think what we will actually do is extend it up one more block with quartz stairs. So we will do quartz stairs on the sides of the oak planks as well. Yeah, I think that'll give us a good design, so go ahead and do that. Let's work on the railing now. I originally was thinking glass, but well, no, I think we'll go with glass. So take out some black stained glass panes, and you can fill these in I'll do black because it has nice contrast with the white, but feel free to again do whatever color, or if you would rather use fence posts or walls, that will work too. And that'll be looking like this. As for the ceiling up here, I think what we will do, we'll come back to it. I think we'll kind of do like an inverted pyramid and have a skylight kind of go to the middle. For now, duplicate that stair pattern on each of the floors below. All right, and once you have done that, it'll be a little disorienting if you're looking at it straight up, but it should be looking about like this. For the doors, I will be using mangrove doors, and these will be placed from the inside of each room, like so, and we will just go around and fill in all the doors on each level. For the service door, we will do two doors like that and for the stairwell we will do another door just like that all right so all the doors are in place and as i was putting those down i got to thinking i was looking at my recording timer this episode is getting pretty long and after i showcase some of the furniture detailing i've realized that there's just not going to be enough time to finish the lobby and the, I'm not even sure what we'll have on the second level yet, or the pyramid roof. So I've decided I'm going to make this a four-part series, and this episode will just be the different rooms. So without further ado, let's get started on some furniture designs. Now, if you've ever stayed in a hotel before, you'll know that the furniture is very basic which is why I have quite a few furniture designs, but not a whole lot. We're keeping it pretty simple here. We have a few different types of beds, a couple desks, some couches and chairs, and then two designs for the smaller bathrooms that I will show you guys how to do. So let's begin with the beds. Uh, any type of wool will do, and either carpet or snow, depending on what you decide to do for lighting. If you do an actual light, say an end rod or a torch or glowstone, you're not going to want to have snow because the snow is going to melt, so you'll want to do carpet instead. But if you do plants on the sides or anything like that, any light such as this dragon egg here, that would work for the snow. So to do a queen size bed, it's going to be three of the color wall and then white wool for the pillows, and then either snow for on top of the white wool for the actual pillows, or carpet, just to give it a little variation in height so that it's not completely flat. So let's say we go with snow. I do two snow in the middle, one snow on each side, and then there's a queen bed. You can spice it up with either some signs around the edge, or perhaps a trapdoor of any kind, like so. And keep in mind, you can use any variation of trapdoor, or sign, or wool. It does not matter, whatever you think will look best. 
For the sides, you could do a floor lamp. I've done a couple designs here using end rods so that it's functional, but also has a nice design. And then a shulker box has a really nice lampshade design to it or an upside down hopper like, or right side up hopper for an upside down lamp like so. You can also use a dragon egg with a slab on top. Just remember to hold crouch when you hold shift when you place down that slab, otherwise your dragon egg will disappear. So you wanna make sure that when you use the dragon egg, place that down and then hold shift and put a slab on top. For the side tables, you could use scaffolding or a crafting table. You could use a solid wood block like that. Put a button on it, or if you have the scaffolding, just leave it as is. You can also decorate those bedside tables with flower pots and any type of plant in there. Or candles will also work. And we can just go over here and say we have that. Now, if you have trapdoors, you can't put a button here, so maybe do scaffolding with the trapdoors, or maybe you're happy with how that looks, perhaps placed sideways, like so. And then you can do some lamps on either side, and you can use the light blocks that are new as of 1.18 or 19, I forget which, to light up the area if you're not using something that already has light. For the king size bed, it's going to be the same length, but it will be instead of those uh, three blocks wide, it will be four blocks like so. And then again, with the snow, you can just extend that like that. And then we can put trapdoors on the sides or maybe signs or a combination of both. You can also do a bunk bed for twin beds. To do that, I took, for this design at least, I took some slabs, smooth quartz slabs, and then I took some stairs, I placed them backwards, and then I placed a block, and then same thing with the backwards stairs and slabs, so the little um, part sticking up in the stairs kind of gives it a, as if it were some pillows. On the front of the bunk bed, you can place some oak trap doors where that can function as the ladder. And then for this, I used dark oak the rest of the way around. If you have it up against a corner, say these are the walls in the room, then you could leave it like that. Or you could put trapdoors here as well. Maybe not on that very top one. And if needed, you could do trapdoors here as well. Again, not on the top, there we go. Like that, and then you have a bunk bed, or you could do a single twin bed using two wool, two white wool for the pillows, and then four colored wool like that. Feel free to decorate the sides. All right, and then for a dresser or desk, TV stand, whatever you want to do, you could do a row across. For this, I just used wood, and then I did buttons and item frames around those for some drawers. For this, I did upside down stairs. So a stair like this and then turn it and then one more upside down stair like that. And then a one block gap and then another upside down stair. And then I put a slab right here for the desk. And then you can have a desk chair using a stair or you could do a slab and have some trap doors around it. However you want to do that, maybe no trap doors. Perhaps you would do some signs on the sides just for some shorter armrests. For the TV, I used a black shulker box placed from the um, placed from behind the desk because the front side it's a little textured, but the underside is just solid black. Looks great for a TV. For the couches, you can experiment with stairs and slabs. So you could do a design with four stairs like this going across, and then turn that last stair, actually turn it again, so you'll turn that one in the corner. And then you can place a slab right there 
for more of a contemporary couch. You can also do a pull-out sofa, so four uh, slabs or stairs like that, and then four slabs in the middle blocks. You can do this design with some pillows. That is used with banners underneath the couch. So to do that, just wreck a couple blocks, place some banners like so, and then stairs on top of those like that. That one's a little covered so we can make that uh, stair, the couch, five blocks long. Or you could do a chair, place two, place two stairs facing into each other, and then two full blocks behind it. On top of those blocks, stairs facing outwards. And then, of course, everybody is familiar with all the different table designs. You could use any form of rod, wall, um, fence, and then, of course, any trapdoor or pressure plate or carpet works for that as well. So that's the main furniture, and then I have a couple bathrooms. We do have quite a few variations in the sizes of bathrooms, but these are the two smallest. So I just wanted to show off how I did these. This is a 3x3, three three, so we have a two-block um, bathtub placed with a stair like that and a stair like this, and then a black, two black stained glass panes to divide it from the toilet over here, just a hopper going into the wall, a pressure plate, or excuse me, a trap door on top. Across from that, another hopper for the sink with a tripwire hook for the faucet, and then a light gray banner as a mirror. And then I put a candle here. I thought it kind of looked like a soap or shampoo bottle. So I placed that down. We have a bath mat for the uh, tub. And then a towel right here. Just a light gray banner. Stone button. Tripwire hook for the shower head. Same concept here. Although a little larger. This time a three block long tub. And then a three block long counter, again with some more of those soap bottles. And then a couple towels, or a towel, and then a mirror. And then a couple trip wire hooks for some towel racks. Okay, so now that you've seen some furniture designs, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to head in here and furnish a few rooms using those designs. And then when I have those designs in place, I will show you how some of these different rooms look with those various furniture designs. See you guys soon. Okay, so I have completed a couple of rooms altogether, including the bathroom. I've done about four or five bathrooms alone, and then two rooms fully furnished. This is one of them. It is not quite the corner room, but it's kind of near the corner. So you walk in, we have a king size bed in this one and the ender dragon lamps, the uh, lamp, the floor lamp going on over there. And then we also were able to fit a desk and a dresser in with a chair. I have an armor stand. As for the bathroom, it's a three by three. So lots of space to, or very little space to make it work. I have a banner for the shower curtain and then just the standard design that I showcased outside. This room is a little larger, so we have a living space in it with a couple sofas. We have another king size bed over here and a TV and a desk. This bathroom, I forgot to showcase it. It's the five by two. We do have a couple of these. So I did a bathtub at the very end, the toilet right up against that, and then a counter in an L shape with a sink in the middle. As for the rest of the designs, tripwire hooks and all that is the same. So those are the bedrooms and bathrooms that I have finished. I did do a couple of bathrooms as well, just to showcase all of the different designs for those, if I can find them. So this is the largest one. It's a five by three. Four, So we have a full bathtub, a walk-in shower, and then the large counter space, another counter over here with a flower pot. And then if I were to furnish this room, I would do a king-size bed here, probably a couch over here, a desk, and all of that good stuff. This would be one of the more expensive rooms, though smaller, more expensive. 
And then I think I have a bathroom. Nope, not in here. See, I'm getting lost trying to find all of these. I think it's over on this side. Aha. This is a 5x3 bathroom, so another little bit larger bathroom. Um, the shower with a full bath in here. So it's one and a half blocks wide for the tub. And then everything else standard as per usual. And then right here, a 3x4 bathroom, a tub on the side this time, with a toilet at the end, and then a counter on this side. So, it's a lot of work. It's tedious. I'm, I will say that. But if you truly stay determined with doing all of those interior rooms, or if you have World Edit and can just copy and paste, do whatever you want to do, or maybe you just leave it as it is. Maybe you don't even touch the interior at all, and you just put black concrete behind the windows to make it look like you can't see in. But that is where I am going to leave part two of this tutorial. Again, next week we will pick back up in the lobby. I know I said we were doing exteriors, but we just aren't going to have time. So we'll do the lobby the bottom floors, and that awesome skylight up above. But that is pretty much it from me. If you guys did enjoy today's tutorial and you would like to see more just like it, be sure you hit that thumbs up button. Also, make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss out on daily videos as soon as I publish those. If you have any requests, you can leave those in a couple ways. The first is via the link that just appeared in the top right corner. That will take you to a request form where you can leave them, or you can do it in the comment section below. If you need to contact me, my email is contactoptimisticgamer at gmail.com, or DM me on Twitter and Instagram at OptimisticGMR. And be sure you head over to my website, theoptimisticgamer.com, for more... Uh, news updates and a gallery page and if you would like you can head over to my patreon page where you can get early access to videos as well as ad free content and all of that good stuff i will leave a link for that in the description as well the triple seven tutorial part one is available on my patreon page right now so head over there and subscribe if you would like early access for that but that is going to do it for me. Comment, like, subscribe, remember to stay optimistic, and I will see you guys tomorrow for the Optimistic Survival Series. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Bye.